The views on this program do not reflect those of ONTV or its board of directors. Welcome to OAA Now, your home for Oakland Activities Association news and information. Here's your host, Sammy Taramina. Welcome to OAA Now here. I'm Sammy Taramina, blog around the OAA, host of Last Three Brain Cells, and the host of Between Taramina's on Orient Neighborhood Television. I'd like to welcome those watching on the local voice on SoundCloud and those watching on YouTube. A lot to talk about this week, obviously. Um, you know, we just had the end of the year for the 2023, 2022-2023 uh, um, season. Um, we got a... A, um, division, a new a, um, new Division One state champion in girls soccer. We're going to talk that Stony Creek win against um, over um, Hudsonville, which that was just an absolute crazy 10 minutes of Stony Creek's career. Um, also, we're going to recap also some softball, obviously, with the um, Lake Oregon getting the Final Four, um, following the Heartland. Heartland ended up winning a Division One state championship in, um, in softball. And also, we're going to look ahead. Obviously, we got the... Um, we got. We just had the volleyball districts released. We just had. I mean, we're gonna talk that. Um, basketball districts are gonna are been released as well. They're also gonna be on my blog as well at Saginaw Bay forty six fifty at blogspot.com. Um, but let's look at obvious. But also, we got some basketball news as, as well. We got to talk about. Of course, Julius Porter at Troy is out. Um, North Farms got a new girls basketball coach. Um, so we let's, we got a lot to talk about this week here on the pod. Um, obviously, when you look at. Um, New hires, um, obviously at North Farmington. Um, this is a hire that I can fully talk about now. I mean, like obviously with the, um, you know, with the Raiders um, going with their new coach, they are going with Michael Allen as the new head coach. Um, he takes over for um, Jeff Simpson. Of course, he's been at North Farmington for 29 years. Um, when you look at North Farmington, um, you know, when you look at the Raiders, I mean, this is a very – Interesting situation because when you look at the Raiders, I mean, last year going 22 and 0, having all that experience, I mean, like that, that says a lot where, you know, it's been. But when you really look at it, um, you know, with all, and he's coming into a situation where the talent pool's not really there. I mean, you got two players coming back and a CJ Hod and Hannah Hart. Um, but that's really about it. I mean, like, so really, when you look at the situation in North Farmington, I mean, it really looks to me like it's going to be, um, it's going to be a full fledged rebuild over there at North Farmington. Now, with all in, he did, he coached a JV team at Lapeer, um, last season. Lapeer had a really nice year in JV girls basketball, went 11 and 10. Um, I mean, they're going to battle hard. I mean, I know what Allen likes to do. He's he's a competitor. He likes, I mean, like, he will, um, <laughs> he, I mean, he, he, he'll he get a lot out of the players, and I expect he'll do the same here at North Farmington, despite, you know, the disadvantages of talent and also program strength. Now, that's going to be the big problem he's going to address. He has to address that, is program strength, because when you look at the situation, how that is, then, you know, that's not a good situation if you are going into, a new, a new, t- a new team, a new program, and you have to handle that, and that's not going to be easy. He was also an assistant at, at Waterford Kettering under current West Bloomy coach Jerry McAllister, so he does have that experience of success. Obviously, you know, working with McAllister over at West Bloomfield, um, you know, over at um Waterford Kettering, of course. McAllister now currently coaching at West Bloomfield, um, so that is going to be a really interesting um. Interesting help. I mean, like, obviously, you know, when you look at the Raiders, you know, going 22 and 0 last year's mentioned, um, they're going to be in the white this year. And then when you find out their district just now, um, you know, and I'm going to give you a little hint of it here for Allen is that district's absolutely brutal. I mean, I'll tell you what. I mean, that district is going to be absolutely brutal. And you're in a district with you're you're going to be in a division with um, Royal Oak, Sea Home, Bloopy Hills, and Harper Woods. That's not easy. Those teams, I think, you know, you look at Royal Oak; they got a lot of experience coming back. Sea Home, you never know with them, but they're always well coached. Under Chris Manchester, um, Bloopy Hills is going to be solid. I mean, Ruby Smith, Ashley Fortner coming back. I mean, that's going to be um, that's going to be huge. Um, and then you have um. And then there's Harper Woods, obviously, with Sierra Peterson coming back. Um, and obviously, when you look at that division, it's not an easy division. So, you know, that's going to be a very difficult task going ahead of them. 
Um, and then you look at obviously, um, and then when you look at obviously the, um, you know, when you look at, um, you know, when you look at it here, it's going to be interesting because you look at the situation, how, um, North Farmton is, and it's going to be a challenge. That is for sure. Um, when you look at the district and I, and these districts just came out. So when you look at, when you look at next week, I may, I might think about bringing in a guest next week here. Um, might think about bringing a guest here for sure to talk the basketball districts next week. And I think that'll be really good to talk about. Um, this is going to be really interesting for North Farmington because for, and especially for Coach Allen, because you're going to be in a district with a state finalist in West Bloomfield. They have a lot coming back. You look at Farm Hills Mercy. They have a very good player coming back. You look at Birmingham Marion. They have a couple good players coming back. But Birmingham Marion last year was at, was not very good. And that is truth. They were not good last year. They should be better this year. And then Farmington, you know it's going to be, you know, they're going to be up and down. But this is probably the worst case scenario for a young coach going into a tough district. That is the absolute worst case scenario. So he's gonna Allen's gonna have his hands full with North Farm. He's gonna really, really have his hands full when you look at the Raiders. I mean, you know, the division's gonna be tough. You're gonna have to replace a lot. You do have two good players in Hannah Hart and the Sea Jihad. That's gonna help things out. Um but you're gonna have they're gonna have some issues. And I think the issues are gonna be straight and forward because you know there might be games where they struggle to maybe score 30 points I mean there's going to be games I mean program strength is a big issue for North Farm it is a big big issue um and you know it's going to be challenging for them it's going to be really challenging especially when you have that schedule coming out um it's going to be really really difficult to say the least um and then let's look at, um, you know, for, for all in, it's going to be a challenge. It'll be a challenge for him going forward. I mean, I'll be very curious to see what he does. But I think right now when I look at that team, when I look at that division North Farmington's in, I don't know. I mean, I, I, I honestly don't know. My thoughts on the all-in hire, um, curious to see what he does. Because, you know, whenever we look at it, you know, he's walking into a new situation. The players don't know what to expect. The coaches don't know what to expect. There's going to have to be a transition period, and it's going to have to happen during the season. I mean, it's not like a situation, you know, when you look at if your coach is walking into a great situation. But you got to look at the situation that North Farms is in, particularly on the girls' side. That's not going to be easy. And he's going to have a very tough road ahead of him. Allen's going to have a very tough road at him. And that's what I'm seeing. That's what I'm seeing. Um, and then let's look at, of course, the um, Troy Cole situation. Of course, um, this was news that made the news last this week. Um, Julius Porter stepped down at Troy. Um, of course, Porter led Troy to a, um, he was 21 and 24 in his, um, you know, but he did lead Troy to a um, state quarterfinal appearance. He was actually 24 and 27 his three years at Troy. Um, did lead him to the quarterfinals. Um, last year had had a really rough year with a very young team. You know, we had a bout with COVID. Um, but, you know, when you look at it, of course, Port, I mean, Porter came in um, as an assistant at Clarkson. I mean, for coach with Dan Fife. I mean, JV coach at Clarkson. I've known him very well. Um, when you look at when you look at of course the um the Porter um departure, I am very curious to see who takes the who takes this job. Because there has been I've heard a lot of names. But I'm very curious to see how this team's going to be. Especially now when you're in a division, you know, that looks winnable. I mean, it looks very winnable. I don't trust Southfield Arts and Tech one bit in that division. None. 
And I'm not being mean to you. Because, yes, they got a lot of players. They got a lot of proven players. They got Kamari Page. You look at Christian Banks. Um, I, I just don't think defensively this team, that team's a liability. They are a liability defensively. I mean, for Coach Kia Coltrane, that's something she's got to correct. Um, but back to Troy. Um, I think when you look at what Porter did, obviously the quarterfinal appearance with the proven experience, um, you know, just, you know, he had a young team. He knew he was going to be young. He knew he was going to be very young. I think also what led to his departure was work commitments. Um, because, you know, let's not forget, these coaches, a lot of coaches, you know what I mean? Some of them, they work at different places, you know what I mean? And sometimes, you know, their jobs, you know, you know, can can be, um, you know, it can be hard. You know what I mean? It can be very hard. And, you know, and I think, you know, that was one of the reasons why. Um, I think when you look at, when you look at the district, how it is, and when you look at that team, but when you look at Troy as a team, I mean, like, they got some nice pieces. They got some young, a nice young nucleus. I, I mean, like, you got you got Diamond Prince there. You got Olivia Sprangler there. You got Carly Higginbottom there. You have, um, you know, Reagan Ziders there. I mean, like, this is a good job. I mean, the Troy job is a good job. I mean, young talent. Um, having a lot of it, I mean, like, had to go through what they had to go through this year. Um, you know, it's a nice blend of talent, you know what I mean? Nice blend of young talent, what you're going to have. And you look at the situation with Troy is, you know, I mean, like, it's, it. I mean, like, this team is young. They're a very young team. But they went through a lot. I will be very curious to see who gets this job. I know a lot of people talking to me about Laura Guzman's name. And that name's been coming up a lot. The reason why I've been saying her name, she coaches softball at Troy, but she also coaches girls basketball at Farmington. So when you look at that name, when you look at the um when you look at what Guzman does, um Guzman can get the best out of her team. She usually does. I mean you see it in softball at Troy, you see it at Farmington, you know? She gets the best out of them. But that's been a name that's been mentioned. Um, another name has been mentioned, of course, has been Troy's assistants. I mean, obviously, you know, if you look at it here, I mean, like, I don't know um, Mantuza's um, first name, but she'd be a good candidate. I think, you know, if you look at it, I think that um, you look at the situation, um... There, I think Troy, you know, if, if she gets the job, I don't really see a co I don't really see like that, you know, I don't really see that big culture change is going to have to go through. But when you look at culture changes and culture shocks, I mean, if you go an outsider, you're going to have to experience one. So when you look at, so when you look at the transition period, there has to be one during the year. Has to be. Um. So when you really look at, you know, Troy really struggled this year. Really did. Now you're going down the blue division. Um, and then, you know, that division looks winnable. I mean, as mentioned, South Arts and Tech, I don't trust that team defensively. I mean, they're going to be the favorite. I think Berkeley is going to be well improved. Um, they did just they just got a new coach recently. Um, but I think Berkeley's a team to really watch for. Um, I think also... Um, you know, Troy's going to be a team mentioned, to be in contention. Um, so, and then you have Adams. I think Adams will be better. You know, I think Adams under Joe Malberg, they had a really rough, t rough, rough time this year. They had a really rough time. But I think with their young nucleus, they're going to be better. So when you really look at it, um, Troy's in a really good spot to do damage. They're in a great spot. Only thing I'm really concerned about with Troy is program strength. Um, who is going to be the other interior? You know, you got you got Mantuza at the five. You got Higginbottom most likely probably be the four. But then who's going to be that other girl backing them up? That's the big question there. 
I mean, depth's going to be a big question for Troy. It really is. Program strength is going to be a big question for Troy. I know everybody's been talking to me about Macy Zyder coming into the program. She's only going to be an 8th grader this year. Um, so that's going to be interesting to see how, um, you know, how whoever the new coach is at Troy, you know, has to get everything in line. Has to really say, okay, you know, how is going to be, how is it going to be over there? I mean, really curious to see how things are going to be over there. I mean, so when you really look at it, um, you know, when you look at the Troy hire, I mean, like, obviously, when you look at the Troy job, it's a great job to have. It's going to be great. I mean, you got a great athletic director, Shane Hines. Um, you get to learn from one of the most legendary boys basketball coaches in Gary Fralick. Um, I mean, like, it's a great job, especially if you're a young coach. It's a great job to have. So we'll see what happens. I mean, we're going to keep an eye on the Troy situation, how that goes. Um, we're going to keep a real close eye on it. So a lot to look at. I mean, like when you look at, of course, North Farmington getting their new coach, Troy, of course, seeing their, um, seeing Julius Porter step down. Um, so a lot to really keep an eye on. And especially when you look at Troy's situation, you know, losing your coach late in the game, especially when you have summer ball going on, that's usually not a good recipe. I mean, it usually isn't. I mean, and the reason why I say this is because, you know, you have your summer schedule, you have everything all situated and all that. Um, and then you see this, you know, you're basically rebuilding the program almost all over again. So that's something to really watch for um, when you look at Troy. I mean, we're going to keep a real close eye on that situation with Troy. Um, whoever gets that job there um, to lead the Colts, um, we'll see what happens there. Um, okay, now let's go to, to um, recapping the um, final week of the season. Um, obviously, when you look at softball, um, Lake Orion, of course, um, they played, um, they knocked off um, Utica Ford 7 nothing. Um, kind of good game from um, Riley Leinberger. Um, it's been a really nice game for them. Um, and Lake Orion went to the um, final four for the first time in um in school history, taking on Heartland, and you know they ran into a very good pitcher in Kylie. Um, I don't remember her name at the moment, but still, I mean, it or four hit four. I mean, they lost four nothing to Heartland. Um, I think the play of the game really was that tag in the first inning, um, that out at home plate where um. Where I think it's Jamie Bell um, got um was tagged out at the plate, and that ended up being like the changing of the game. It ended up really being that. Um, but you know, loud Heartland to settle down. They got some timely hits. They got a triple, a two-one triple that ended up being the difference of the game, um, and that was it. I mean. Give credit where credit's due. I mean, Heartland, you know, experienced team. I mean, really, they really, they played well in that one. They really, really played well, um, really in that game. They they just really, really, you know, they, they were the ones that were in control of that one. I mean, they just really, you know, they, um, you know, they, I mean, Lake Orion, they struggled to get the offense. I mean, they struggled to find offense in that game. They really did. But credit where credit's due for Heartland. Um, but for Lake Orion, you know, they don't lose. They they lose some talent, but they have a lot of their team coming back. I mean, this is mostly with a sophomore, junior heavy team. It wouldn't surprise me if Lake Orion's back next year in softball. It would not surprise me because you look at the program that Coach Joe Whitera has done. He's done a wonderful job of that program. I mean, and to get to the Final Four, the girls have tasted it. They want to go back. Um, this is going to be a motivation next season for them to get back in there. And I think it'll be very interesting to see how it goes. Um, so when you look at it, I mean, I think Lake Orion's in a good position to do some damage. When you look at softball, Stony Creek 
they're going to be solid next year. They're going to be good. I mean, you still have Aaron Flynn coming back. You still have you still you still have some proven hitters on that team. I mean, I think Stony Creek's going to be a team to really watch for next year. They're going to be a team that I think could do some damage. Um, Adams could be a player next year. I think they could be a player. Oxford, obviously, with the district they had, um, they had a really nice, um, they had a really nice, um, you know, I mean, they had a nice run in the division this year. They had a really nice run in that division. Um, I know Franz and Wojcic very well. Um, but Adams could be a team to watch for next year. I mean, they could be. Um, so when we look at it here with softball, in the OA, I think Lake Orient's a team to watch next year. I think they're going to be the favorite. Um, but Stony Creek will have a huge say on this. So when you look at the red, I think I think that's what it's going to come down to. Bloomfield Hills, they could hit. But... What I think the game that's going to really, when I look at Dan Whitemire's team, yes, they had a great year. They had a really good year. They could hit. <laughs> but I'm going to look at that Utica Ford game and say to myself, where was the defense? Where was the defense in that game against Ford? Where was it? I mean, it was stunning, to say the least. It was really, really stunning. I mean,. How do you explain it? How do you explain it? Um, I thought Royal Oak, you know, what they did in the postseason, of course, knocking off Berkeley, um, getting to the um regional semis was good for them. I mean, they had a great, they had a good year. Um, especially when you knock off your rival Berkeley. So that says a lot there. I mean, but I thought Royal Oak had a nice year. Um, but we'll see. We'll see what we look at next year with softball. Um, but I, I really think Royal Oak, um, will be, I think Royal Oak will be a contender. But when I look at next year, I think Lake Orion's a team to beat. I, I just think the Dragons are a team to beat. So, let's go now from softball. Um, let's go now to, um, to girls soccer. I mean... We had a state champion crowned in Stony Creek. Um, Stony Creek knocked off um, Hudsonville. To, they, they knocked off Celine prior to that 2-0. Uh, but they knocked off Hudsonville 2-1 um, in the um, state final on Saturday afternoon of Michigan State. Um, Lillian Bosley missed soccer. I mean... You got to give her a lot of credit. You know what I mean? When you look at what she's done for that program. Lead Stony Creek to their second second state title. Scored the tying goal on a beautiful, beautiful feed. She got, she got a beautiful feed. Um, it was just a beautiful feed. I mean, obviously, when you look at it was a beautiful feed from Megan Kennedy. Just an absolute beautiful feed. I mean, and it, it was just perfect. Just perfect, perfect, perfect. And that was when Hudsonville was leading 1-0. And that was in the 71st minute. Um, usually in soccer, I know, I'm not, I don't know why, um, you know, you usually see in World Cup games, you know what I mean? Like, you know, sometimes, you know, they move the clock up, you know what I mean? But in girls soccer, they go 40 minutes, and they and they counted down, forty minutes count down. So if technically the seventy first minute in girls soccer, which is about nine minutes to go in the game, Hudsonville's up one nothing, playing prevent defense a lot. You know what I mean? Basically, you know, basically playing prevent defense. You know, trying to keep the, the score low as it is. But that perfect pass from Kennedy to Bosley, and that kind of set up a ripple effect. Because that goal by um, Bowlesley gave Stony Creek new life. It gave them new life, new momentum, and it tied the score up. So you know now, with nine minutes to go in the game, Stony Creek's got all the momentum. You know, they got all the momentum in the world, and they're going attack mode, attack mode. And then, with about a minute and 30 to go, 
Bosley scores again off a great corner kick. And the ball just found her. She put it in the net. Stony Creek leads 2-1. Doing up the hang on. Game over. I mean, when you look at Stony Creek's pass in the postseason, having to go to that kiss of death district, the group of death district, I call it. You know what I mean? People, you could call it the group of death or the kiss of death. You know what I mean? You know, they call it, in soccer, that's what it is. When you look at, when you're in a district with Rochester, Rochester Adams, Utica Eisenhower, Utica, Utica Ford, and Lake Orion, that is virtually the kiss of death district. Whoever wins that district usually will go on and win a state title. Usually. But, for Stony Creek to do what they did. Knocked off Utica Eisenhower on a Kennedy goal. Then stunned the top ranked team in the state, Rochester. Th put three three goals on them. That was insane. And then they had to go through um, the defending Division One state champion, Bluefield Hills. They knocked off them. 1-0. And then knocked off New Baltimore Anchor Bay in dramatic fashion. You know, they won, I think that game was extra time. And they won that one 2-1. One. And then to get a home game in the state semifinal against Celine. Um, I don't know if, you know, it is what is, but I could tell. You've had to have known Celine going like, wait a minute here. Why are we going on the road literally to the our opponent's home field to play a state semifinal game? You know. So they might have a beef with the MHA. I get it. I mean, but that's how the the um that's how it's drawn up. And Stony Creek was the prime assignment for that for that um state semifinal game. So Salim might have a complaint about it, but that's where the game was played. Um, and then of course the Hudsonville game. So when you really look at it, Stony Creek had a lot of experience. 13 players back from that team. 13 players. They lose 13 seniors. They lose 13 proven seniors. You look at a team like Rochester, they lose 10. Um, so when you really look at it here for Stony Creek, the path they had to go through, it was a tough pass. It was a really tough pass. But they got through it. Knocked off, I think, at least four state-ranked teams. Top-ranked Rochester. Utica Eisenhower was ranked. Um, Celine was ranked. And um, Hudsonville was ranked. So, that says a lot. Really, really says a lot about the path where Stony Creek went. I mean, like, you know, it, it says a lot. I mean, credit where credit's due. They had, they had really good goaltending. And Merrick Schlaubach, of course, a lot of people know Merrick Schlaubach from playing girls basketball at Stony Creek. Um, but she was really good in that all year, all, year, all postseason for Stony Creek. Defense was solid. Um, I know Solik was solid for them this year. Gotta get my Soliks right here. I mean, like, my um, sometimes my brain just goes in and out. But, obviously... You know, playing for Emily Solik, um, she wore the same number. I mean, like, you know, and let's not forget, she scored the winning goal in Stony Creek's first state championship run. She scored the winner. Um, for Stony Creek, it's the second, it's the second ever Division One state championship in soccer. And, you know, when you look at the Cougars as a team. I mean, like, they, you know, they, they worked hard for this one. They earned it. Really did. Um, they lose a lot of talent, though. They lose a lot of talent. But for them to go out as Division One state champions, that says a lot. It says a lot, you know, for how hard they worked. Um... Give credit where credit's due. Give credit where credit's due. I mean, you know, 
Hard to believe the OAS, the season, the year's over. Hard to believe it. I mean, now you get seven, seven weeks. When you recap soccer, um, when you recap soccer next year, you're still going to have the Rochester contingency. You know, Rochester, Adams, and Stony Creek. I think all three of them are going to be very good still. I mean, then you have Troy and Troy Athens. Um, you know, they're going to be, um, they're going to be solid. I think Athens will be good again. I, I mean, like, I still can't believe how they lost New Baltimore and Bay in the, um, regional semis. Um, and then you look at, you know, and then of course you look at, of course, you look at, um, Lake Orion could be a player next year. Clarkson will be up there. Oxford will still be there. I mean, I mean, girls' soccer next year, I think it could be, I mean, Boomby Hills, they should be good again next year. Um, I think girls' soccer next year could be really interesting. It'll be interesting. So, we'll see what happens. We're going to see what happens. Um, when you recap the 2022-2023 school year, I mean, just a lot of, a lot of just unique things. A lot of unique things. When you look at in the fall, obviously, with Adams winning a um, state title in um, girls golf, um, and then boys soccer, I mean, the run they had, which is insane, just incredible, the run Adams had in boys soccer. And then, of course, in football, you know, I think when you look at Adams' senior class, this they were very good, very successful. Class of 2023 at Adams. You look at the success that they've had. You look at a girls golf state title. You look at a boys soccer state title. You've been to the Division I state finals in football. You've been to the, um, you know, you've, been a, you've won a state title in cheerleading. You've been, a, um, you've been in numerous state finals in cheerleading. I mean, you look at, you've won a baseball title. I mean, you won a baseball um, league title. You've, I mean, like, you made a lot of noise. They won a cross, they won a, Regional and track and field. They won the, um, they won a, um, got the state quarterfinals for the first time in school history. So that tells you the success that Adams has had. You know, this class of 2023, they've been part of, part of a lot of special things over at Adams. A lot of special things. And I think that class is going to go down as probably one of the best classes in Adams history. Because of the success they had athletically. I mean, and don't get me wrong. I mean, they've had a lot of great successes. Really have. Um, obviously, when you look at the winner, we talked the um, quarterfinal appearance by Adams. Um, girls basketball, West Bloomfield getting the state final. Um, had that tough loss to Rockford um, where, um, obviously, you look at West Bloomfield. Um, in girls basketball, you have to start. It starts and ends with the Davis sisters. Um, then they had both Hendrick sisters, and then Destiny Washington. Um, they do lose um, Sydney Hendricks. I mean, Kendall Hendricks is back for them, along with both Davis sisters and Destiny Washington. I'll be curious to see who that fifth starter is going to be for West Bluefield next year. Um, for Coach Joe McAllister, I'm really curious to see how that's going to go, but. Just the path they went through, West Bloomfield, um, literally taking names, but then they were tested. I mean, like, they were tested in several ways. I mean, I thought Rochester gave them problems this year. I, I thought they did, especially with the um, Twin Towers with Alice Max and Kylie Robinson. Um, I thought Lake Orion did at times. In the, and then, of course, when they ran into Rockford, um, Rockford did a really good job slowing them down. And basically just exposing the three-point defense. I mean, if there was one weakness on West Bloom, but they had all year long, and that was exposed in that game against Rockford, was their three-point defense. And that's what happened. That's really what happened that game. Was, and I would care to see if West Bloom can address that. Because their three-point defense, even with all the talent they have, on that team. Not good. Their three-point defense. Not good. Not good. So that's something to really watch for. Heading into this year for West Bloomfield. Is can they 
improve on the three-point defense. They talk about getting back. But if you want it, one thing if you want to fix, start fixing that three-point defense. Um, and then, of course, we got in the spring. Of course, when you look at the rest of the winter, actually, um, you know, wrestling, obviously, you, you still have Oxford there. You still have Clarks in there. Um, I think they're going to be the top teams in wrestling next year. Um, obviously, and then, um, obviously girls basketball, you got to look at Lake Orion's run. Um, that was another, um, another great, um, great showing, of course, when you look at the Dragons, um, a lot of experience this year for that team. I mean, when you look at, um, you know, the run they had, um, winning at district in dramatic fashion against Clarkston. Um, and then. Probably, I think, one of the best games I've seen all year long was their game against Howell. Because that was a game that I thought, personally, could have gone either way. Because Howell, of course, well-coached under then now co under former coach Tim Olszewski. Um, you have Molly Dur Duru, Gabriel Peichel, um, who's probably going to be... It wouldn't surprise me probably the next three years. I think she would be... a Real great candidate for Miss Basketball. I'm calling it right now. I think Gabrielle Peichel is going to be one of the going to be a Miss Miss Basketball candidate in the state of Michigan. She's that good. She was she was really good. Um, to go up against a veteran heavy team like Lake Orion, um, that game could have went either way. I know, and I've heard the radio call of Debate and I, Dan Leach. Um, good guy by the way. Um, had a chat with him a couple times on Twitter. Um, I still remember that call very well. Um, and I would tell this to Dan Leach right now is I would talk, if you want to complain about that foul that Maui Dewey did against Matty Ebert, that three point play, it was a legit foul. I would tell him to talk to Kyle Purdy. I would do that because it was a legit foul. It really was. And, you know, I've looked at, I've looked at the replay, three different motions from it, and it was a legit foul. And I know, and I knew Leach was complaining about it. So, in a tie game with two minutes to go in the game. Now, was it a play that changed the game round? No, I don't think it was. I think Lake Orion's defense at the end of that game really, really showed in that one, especially, you know, for them not to let Howell get a shot off. That says a lot. That really does. I think another great game that I'm going to remember this year is in boys basketball. Um, Fenton and Clarkston. That was nuts. I mean, because that was like a game, and I heard it on the radio, I heard it on WHNI, um, 93-1, um, great job to Dan Leach as always. Um, but that game was just insane. I mean, it it had so many, so many twists and turns. You know what I mean? That you would ever think that that it would go in a game like that. You know, Fenton had no answer for Cozen inside. They had no answer for Des Stevens. I mean, Des had a really nice game that day for Clarkston. That game went double overtime, and Clarkston found a way and survived. That really was the difference. Um, but Fenton, my goodness, they're one of the, if you want to know why Fenton's one of the top teams in the Flint Metro League this year, that's it. You look at that game against Clarkson and those two teams played prior, earlier in the season that year. Clarkson won that one at Fenton and, you know, you knew Fenton was going to be motivated with the regional on their home court. Um, I think when you look at big upsets, in boys basketball. In the girls' side of things, I think one that really sticks out to me on the girls' side of things for girls' basketball, the, the one that should have happened, didn't happen, but then there were a couple that happened in boys' basketball. Um, I think the one in girls' basketball that should have happened was Groves against um, was Groves against Birmingham Marion. Groves should have won that game. I keep looking at that film. I'm going like, how in the world does Groves lose that game? How? You dominate that game, you control the game, control the tempo, and then you and then you give it away. You gave that game away. 
I know it has to make Coach Allison Heidi sick. I know it does. You know, how do you lose that one? How? And that Burmese Marion team was not very good. I mean, yeah, they got a good player, Mackenzie Swanson. But still, how do you lose that game? Left, I'm, I'm still speechless over that game. Really am. How Groves lost that one. And we're in June. And I'm still speechless. Um, on the girls, uh, I mean, that was, I mean, like, I mean, I can make a rant about that one. On the boys' side, obviously, you got to look at Seahome, what they did against Groves this year in the district in the first round. Um, when you look at Seahome, Seahome has had a, I don't know what it is when they play Groves. It's just, you know, in football, it's starting to become a little bit of an issue. But in basketball, let's not forget, Seahome was having their full complement of players coming back. From suspension, from injury, um, you name it. But, you know, when you really look at what they did, obviously, you know, you have Kyle Rob you have Robbins there. I mean, you have Jeff Disk. Ben Diskin had a heck of a game there. Um, yes, I know Groves is a very young team. But let's not forget, this team made a ton of strides this year under Coach Mark West. They made a ton of strides. But, you know, people are going to say, well, they underestimated Seahome. Did they underestimate Seahome? Everything looks to me like when I'm looking at everything, it looks like they did. I mean, they thought Seahome would be an easy win. Here's one thing I learned. When you learn in life to not, I mean, like, especially when you're your arch rival, you think you're better than them. But sometimes karma comes back at you. And that's what happened to Groves. Karma came back and bit him. Came back and bit him. I mean, you know, I mean, Seahome, you know they're a gritty team. They earned the blue title. <laughs> they won that title through hard work and dedication and grit. I mean, they knocked off the way they beat Troy Athens. Um, and it was the same exact thing that Troy Athens did against Lake Orion was, except this time Athens had a chance to win it again, but missed it. They made it against Lake Orion, but for Seahome to win that game at Troy Athens, I thought that was the game that, you know, that was the game I thought really, you know, it gave them confidence going in that game against Groves um, to knock off their arch rival. Um, you know, and, and it says something there. really does. Give credit credit's due, though. I mean, you got to give credit to Seahome, Coach um, Greg Ge Mike DeGeter, um, for that one. That was one of my um, unique upsets. I think another one was out of the OA, is outside the OA, but I thought Holly against Heartland. I, I really thought, you know, and I know Coach Steve DeHart very well. I love the man to death. Um, but Heartland, you know, they struggled this year. They really struggled. And they stunned Holly. By two, they stunned him. I couldn't believe it. I mean, yeah, I know the KLA and the Flint Metro are two different leagues. But still, I can't believe it. So that, that, was, that, was, a, that was hard for me to take this year, that upset. Because I couldn't believe that one. Because of how the success Holly's had this year, this year under Coach Steve DeHart, um, you just kind of thought, you know what I mean? We would have seen Holly Fenton Part Four. I mean, they played twice in the regular season. Fenton won both. Holly got him in the Metro League um, title game. Um, just didn't expect that. Really didn't. Um, obviously, with um, when you look at the changes. Um, for next year for basketball, obviously Harper Woods goes back down to Division Two, um, and then um, obviously Ferndale's Division One state championship in boys basketball. Oh, Division Two state championship in boys basketball. I forgot to mention that earlier, so I apologize to those in Ferndale. I mean, really do. 
but their state championship run. Um, the path they had to go through. Um, I think for me, I started believing this team when they um when they knocked off um Saginaw in the M State semis. I mean, they had they struggled in the quarters against Goodrich. They really did. I'm not knocking it on them, but there were some times that I thought in that game against Goodrich or Ferndale almost blew it. And they did. They almost blew it. I thought the game against Saginaw was a gut check call for them because you know how good Saginaw is. We know the reputation they have. We know the program they have. And for them to beat Saginaw, I thought that was that was huge, you know. And then, uh, and then, obviously, getting past—I um, don't remember the school in Grand Rapids. They had a knock off, but um, but I know they had problems against Grand Rapids, um, Catholic Central. I know that the last two years that Coach Juan Rickman's had has been Grand Rapids Catholic Central. I think it's Grand Rapids Northview. I think that's the one that I'm thinking about this year. They play in the state final, um, but when they played Grand Rapids Catholic Central, they had problems against them. I mean, now Grand Rapids Catholic Central, I think, was upset by Northview. I think they were upset by them. Um, But for Ferndale, for Coach Juan Rippon to get his first state championship since 1966, that says a lot. Really does. I think playing in the red kind of helps a lot as well. You know, you're going against teams like North Farmington, Clarkston, um, Oak Park, um, you know, I mean, like those, t- and in Adams, those type of teams, you know what I mean? That's going to get you ready. That'll get you ready. That really will. Um, so, Ferndale's Division Two State Championship, <laughs> I mean, like, that was one of my, um, that was a great moment, especially for the community of Ferndale, to get that, um, to get that, State championship. Now I'm curious to see how they defend that title. They lose a lot of talent. I mean, but be very curious to see how Rickman does this year. Really, really curious to see how Rickman does with Ferndale this year. Um, as I mentioned, the districts just released. We're gonna we're gonna post them on the blog at um segment by forty six fifty at blogspot.com. Um volleyball district also been released as well. Um we're gonna talk volleyball districts um going in the f- going in the future. We'll probably have girls basketball districts next week. I'll probably have a guest on here for that. Um, and then, and then of course, boys basketball, their districts were released. Um, we'll talk that. I'll ask me on the blog as well. Um, and then let's go into spring. I mean, obviously when you look at spring, um, the expectations for a lot of these teams, you know, baseball, you know, who was going to, could Adams win a state title in baseball? Um, could Lake Orion be Lake Orion? Um, you know, and it looked like it was getting, we were thinking about maybe a collision course between the Dragons and the, um, Highlanders in the quarters. I mean, unfortunately it didn't happen. I mean, like, but Lake Orion made it to the, um, I mean, Lake Orion got the regional final, ran to a very good Macomb, Dakota team. Um, Adams is upset, uh, was upset by Troy Athens. Um, I didn't expect that to happen. 4-3 game this year. I mean, that 4-3 game in the, um, regional semis at Avidale, I didn't expect that. Nobody did. Nobody did. And the way that happened, um, you never know. I mean, like, but still, I mean, that was an upset that I didn't expect happened was Rochester Adams, um, going out in that round. Now, there were a lot of upsets around the state that occurred. Um, Orchard Lake, St. Mary's top-ranked team in the state fell to Lake Ori in the, um, in the um, district final. And then you look at, of course, Bay City West. Bay City Western, they were upset in the district. Um, oh, John Glenn, they were upset. Also. And then... So, when you really look at it, I mean, Macomb, Dakota was upset by... Um, I thought that by Woodhaven, I mean, in the, in the state semifinals, didn't expect that to happen. Um, 
but a lot of upsets. I mean, Lake Orion's upsets of West Blue Bay and Orchard Lake St. Mary's, especially when they were struggling. Um, that was big. I thought Holly upsetting Oxford was a surprise. I didn't expect Holly to make it to the district final. Um, you know, Grand Blank and Clarkston. I mean, like Grand Blank, um, you know, just dominated Clarkston. They didn't expect that to happen. Um, so really, you know, in baseball, obviously those are the, um, those are the big stories, obviously. You know, then of course there's Athens is upset against Adams. I mean, didn't expect that to happen. You know, and I think a lot of those kids are going to remember that rest of the lives. Track and field, Adams winning the regional and cross country. Um, you know, and that was, oh, and I'm in track and field, Adams winning the um, track regional. That was insane. Really insane. Rochester making some noise. Oak Park getting another state championship in track and field. When you look at the way they played in that regional against Detroit Renaissance. I mean, you know, for them to bounce back like that and to win a um, Division I state championship in girls track, that's insane. Really is. So, a lot to be proud of. This um, class of 2022-2023 um, in the OA. Had a lot of state champions crowned. Um, and also, I forgot to mention tennis. Seal won a state title in tennis. Um, in girls tennis. I mean, that's their first since 2018. Behind the play of their doubles teams. Knocked off Grand Rapids, Forest Hills, Northern Grand Rapids, Forest Hills Central. Adams had a chance to knock Nordville off to win the Boys Golf State title. I mean, just a lot of accomplishments this year around the OAA. There's a lot of successes that this league has had. And there's going to be a lot more to come. I mean, you got class of 2023-2024. You know, this will be very interesting this upcoming season. Really interesting. But for this season here, I'd like to thank the class of 2022-2023 for a great year. A great sports year. State champions crowned. Look at Stony Creek Girls Soccer, Seahome Girls Tennis. Um, Adams Boys Golf, Adams um, Girls Golf. Um, you look at Adams Boys Soccer. Um, Rochester Cheerleading won a state title in in there. Ferndale Boys Basketball State Championship. Um, I mean, like, you know, just a lot. A lot of great things that happen around the league. And you look forward to, you know, you wish them the best of luck in their, um, in their careers. You wish all of them the best of luck. So, you know, but you also got to look forward to 2023, 2024. I mean, you got to look forward to the storylines that are being drawn there. Every, everybody has their own story. And for a lot of these, for a lot of these student athletes, their stories are not, are not yet written. You know? I mean, you go out there in the world and... You know, you go out there in the world, you're always going to remember your high school memories. You're always going to remember them. Good or bad, you know, I mean, like, you're always going to remember them. That's what I would say to, to every high school athlete today. Your story is not yet written. Everything is one chapter in a book. That's how I look at it. That's how everybody has to look at it. So I congratulate the class of 2023-2024 on a very successful year and wish, and wish them nothing but the best of luck as they go on their future endeavors. Now we look forward to 2023 and 2024. Got fall coming up. A lot of, you know, you got a lot of things going on right now. You got summer league. You got... You got um, you got football coming up pretty soon. I mean, like I'm already been working on the preview for football already. Um, got my top ten um, 
figured out already to start the year. So it should be very interesting. But seven weeks. Then we started back up again. Especially with football. You got cross country. You got volleyball coming up. I mean, just a lot of storylines when you really look at around the OA. So we'll see what happens. See what happens. My final thoughts is, um, obviously, when you look at the um, class 2022-2023, great year, as I mentioned. Um, a lot to look, be proud of. A lot to be proud of. So, we're going to see what happens. Um, but like I said, you know, for, uh, for, for everybody here, you know what I mean? It's just a book. You know, writing a book. Part of a chapter. You know what I mean? So... See what happens going forward. Um, 20, 2023, 2024, a lot of storylines coming up. We're going to talk about. Okay, everybody, I'm going to sign off here. Make sure you follow the blog at Second Bay 4650 at blogspot.com. Uh, football coaches, if you want to have a chat, um, DM me on Twitter um, about how your team's been going. Um, next week, we're going to talk basketball districts. We're going to talk volleyball districts. Um, so we'll see what happens. Sorry, I'm signing off here. Um, take care. God bless. And I will see you all next week, everybody. Take care, and I will see you all next week. God bless all.